Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Unbox Live. I'm your host, Rob Gagne, and I'm sitting next to Ed of Waxing Moon Humidors. Ed, thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for the invite. Yeah, this has been a fun discussion. We started the discussion yesterday, and I immediately was like, we got to <laughs> talk about wood humidors because, one, you make wood humidors. Yeah, yeah. Two, there's, I have a lot of questions about this. This was my very first humidor, and I literally cut it not in half, I cut it open yesterday and found out what was really made up in this humidor. What, what is it made out of? And it's, it's not a very expensive humidor. You can get them from anywhere from 70 to a hundred bucks. I'm not gonna tell the name, so don't ask. Uh, I'm not gonna get into the middle of naming names. All wood, mass produced wood humidors can go two ways. They can go less expensive, and that's what you're going to get when you pay for it. Or they can go the same route that you go where it's hardwood, better construction, but not a ton of them do it that way. Right. Yeah. There's very, very few handmade people out there, but I, yeah, but they're out there and, and there's room for room for everything out there. Absolutely. Um, and I guess we're just going to try to figure out if does your cigar taste better in one I think that's a great question. So tons of people out there will say, my first question was, does a cigar actually taste better in a wood humidor or basically Tupperware container, something that doesn't really have any Spanish cedar, or even if you put cedar strips in it, does it really make a big deal? So if you just went with no cedar, airtight humidor, or one with cedar, will you get more flavorful cigars out of the one stored in a wood humidor? And I don't think anyone can answer that question. You would need, you know, a random sample of people, 30 plus people. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. It's subjective to me. It's very subjective. I, and, you know, there's a lot of parameters involved with, you know, how hot, are, how hot are you burning and, you know, what the cigar is and who, who's evaluating. And for me, it, it doesn't matter. It, it's all about the experience. You know, it's all about what do you want to experience when you smoke your cigar? Do you want to, uh, um, I mean, I know, I know guys that have, inter, you know, bars down in their basement and, and the ambiance and everything, uh, where a wine a door looks is perfect. Right. You know, it fits their lifestyle. It fits their needs. Good to go. Right. So there's a lot of different things out there, but you know, I think we're we're focusing on what the Spanish cedar does. Yeah. Well, and for me, like let's take the factor of the cigar is absolutely gonna taste better. Let's just say we don't know that. For me, when I open up a wood humidor and I get the mix of tobacco, that cedar smell, that Spanish cedar smell, and it hits me before I even smoke, I start to salivate. It's, there's just something about it. It's the same thing as when I walk into the walk-in humidor at Tobacco Grove. It's like I can smell all this tobacco. I can smell all this wood, and it just makes me start to salivate. I actually want that as my basically pre-light experience. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't get the same thing when I open up my Rubbermaid containers and my Bovity humidor bags. I love my Bobby humor bags for long-term storage, but I don't like going into them, pulling out a cigar to smoke because I don't get the salivation of the smell and the oral factory. And like my brain is starting to go, you're going to smoke a cigar and it's going to taste so good. And you kind of get excited, almost like, you know, a dog ready to eat dinner. <laughs> yeah. Starts drooling. Yeah. That's me with a wood humidor. So if you're looking for that, you can, I don't think you can replace it with, anything that's not wood humidor. No, um, which is not to say that they're not doing a good job humidifying the cigar. No, because an airtight container and boveda in it is great. Yeah, you know, and- And, and you'll still have great cigars, right. but it's not gonna be- It's not gonna give you the same experience as, you know, the, it, it's very subjective. You know, the, I think I think a lot of the experiences, some, you know, the get your box and open it up and look at everything and yeah, right. smell it and pick the one you want. And 
If you're out there in the comments, drop a comment of whether you like to smoke out of wood humidor or if you don't have wood humor at all and don't really care. Like I wanna kind of hear people's opinions. Do you like wood? Is it a must have? Is it not? For me, it's a must have. Um, but now let's talk about, to me, the real question was, are wood humidors hard to maintain? And the answer is maybe, they could be. And that's why we cut this humidor open because there are going to be varying degrees of quality just like cigars. You can buy bundle sticks, you're just gonna have a bundle stick. Or you can buy premium premium and you can have nuanced flavors coming out of that cigar. Let's consider the humidor similar to a home. You can build your home out of straw and not put any major insulation in it or you can build it out of bricks, put insulation in it and it will, you know, not the heat and the cool will not kick on as much. Yeah, see how often that furnace comes on Yeah, or the air conditioner. We're approaching winter here in Minnesota, yeah. so we yep. know all about it. It's getting cooler. We like it. Windows are open right now in my house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but the, when it's 20 below outside. Yeah, definitely not open those no, windows. And, it, and it's kind of nice to not have your furnace running and, you know. And let's talk about where the windows are in cheap humidors. Okay. So let's break this bad boy open. We have a bit of a macro lens that we're going to go in uh, nice and tight on this. But... Ed, you are already started this. Here is basically a cross section of the entire thing. The only thing that is solid Spanish cedar are these pieces right here that make up the lid. So there, those pieces uh, that are making up this, this lid, uh, tongue and grew, or this, I don't know, what would you call this, Ed? This is like the... The, the, the lip. seal, yeah, the lip. Okay, yeah, I, yeah. I wonder about that because I was looking at the end of it, and it looks like it might be. Do you think it's not we, solid? We might be fooled again. Well, look at that. Is it solid? Yep. Okay, so we verified it is solid. The lip around the. If you look right there, that's a solid piece of cedar. But what we did on the body part is we chip this away and this is literally paper paper thin you can kind of see it right here where the table saw had chipped away some of this it is not very thin and this is actually still got mdf on it and so really what you're dealing with is this entire humidor this whole thing is mdf with a very paper thin lining of Spanish cedar minus this piece and this piece, which is basically creating the lip for the lid. That's it. That's not a lot of actual hard cedar. So if we look at that material, we are literally, this is MDF guys. This is glued pieces of, of fragments of wood. Sawdust. And then this is actual hard Spanish cedar and it's basically laid on there like that. Now this is way thicker than obviously what this is because this is paper thin. You can't even tell where it even starts right here. And then obviously a laminate wood on the outside. And, and again, that's that's not a hard wood. You're, you're basically, uh, this stuff exchanges moisture really well. And in fact, um, if we were to pour water on these um, types of products, they absorb moisture real quick spanish cedar will too but if you had so what you do though is you put a you can see the shine here yeah on the inside of the the inside That's of the humidor is raw sealed and he actually puts a seal on the inside so when you actually pour water on it it just yeah it's beating up and moving around you can move that all day long this is already absorbing this just comes right off wiped off so the wood's not even wet with a spanish cedar inside of there once your spanish cedar is seasoned it's not gonna have to keep seasoning through this the hardwood where whereas this you're gonna be seasoning you've got you're gonna have to season all of the uh mdf as well you're basically seasoning the entire box so this is the Which finished is hardwood 
then the Spanish cedar goes on the inside. And really what he's saying is you're only seasoning this Spanish cedar and it, then it stops and the moisture is not going all the way through. Whereas when you go ahead and you do this, the moisture is going all the way through. And that's why these things leak like sieves. They just do, they will, and they're gonna do it for as long as you still have this. And look how, how paper thin this bottom is. I've always said they cheap out on the bottom. The bottom is way thinner than the top and it's essentially a giant hole where moisture is going in and out all the time. And this is where I struggled with this humidor in the wintertime. I'd have to switch from maybe 72s to 75s just to get the relative humidity up, or I'd have to use twice as many bovida. That is completely and totally fine. You just need to know that you are having to apply more horsepower. Basically, you got to turn that furnace on higher or you gotta turn it on more often. And when you add more bovida packs to the humidor, it can sustain it because the exchange of moisture isn't happening as great um, when you basically have more bovida in there because it's filling, it keeps filling it up and it's not letting it drop down. But when you're using a solid wood that's lined, that has actual hard Spanish cedar, at least, you know, what are you using? A I quarter use, of an inch? I use quarter inch. Quarter of an yeah. inch, not paper thin. Now you're getting to the level of like, okay, it's sustaining itself with minimal fluctuations, with not having to use as many bovida. And more importantly, the fluctuations I think is the most important thing for me. Once the seasons change or my fluctuations happen in my humidor, that's when my cigars start reacting. And that's the whole reason why you have a humidor in the first place, so that when you put boba in it, it creates an ecosystem that doesn't fluctuate. That's right. And, you know, Spanish cedar is also, should be considered as a humidification device as well, because once it's seasoned and you open and you close the humidor, it's going gonna, it's gonna to fill it back up with, you know, where it wants to be, and then it, it will pull from the bovida packs. Right. You know? um, there's a question out here. Go back to that question. I think it's interesting because I still think there's a part of this that's missing that we don't know. And so Kevin asks, I line my Tupperware or Tupperdor with a lot of Spanish cedar and use cedar trays for my sticks so I get the best of both in my opinion. Here's my one concern. When they age cigars that are already rolled. We're talking, they're already rolled. They're not aging the tobacco for making it. They're aging the cigars. They age the cigars in rooms that have this cedar in it. But a room never is fully sealed like a Tupperware container because the cigars are still off-gassing some fermentation and some basically ammonia is still mm -hmm. coming off. That's why it's valuable to have cigars that are aged longer after pre-roll or after, sorry, after post-roll. And if I think about the way they do it, they're doing it in a non-airtight container. So my question is, is it better to have them age in something that breathes a little bit of, of air? It allows some gases to go that you don't want to keep. Um, and, you know, is that going to make my cigars taste better? I personally think it does, yeah. but I don't have any science to back it up, but I think it does. So that's a great, I mean, I, I love the fact that you're already using a Tupperware container in Spanish cedar and, you, and you're, you're hitting everything and you're using Boveda and you're getting it all. But are you, could you get just a little bit more if you had something that would naturally breathe moisture, kind of the same way they age those cigars mm -hmm. at the factory? Yep. You know, and I don't think there's a bad way to do it. You know, I mean, it, it's all good. Everybody does what they have to do to make sure they 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 can get the best quality out of their cigar. That's the whole point is we're yeah. trying to smoke the best cigars we possibly can. And I think that's where it lies for each individual to decide. But How are you smoking the best cigars? If that is Tupperware with, with Spanish cedar in it, then great. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying for me, 
that's not it. I want to go wood. And I, and I, this was, I get you guys, this was my first humidor. This is what I was dealing with. It was a nightmare. And so as you graduate, let's talk about that. Now let's talk about how we're going to select humidors. So this is like a 70 to hundred count humidor. Now we need to go to the next level, which is like 300 all the way up to about a thousand. This is where we're going to get into a humidor that's actually worth its money. <laughs> and first let's talk about Spanish cedar because Spanish cedar is really not cedar. I learned that. Uh, it's, it's in the mahogany family. It's in the mahogany family. <laughs> it, and then the other thing is, okay, so a lot of people say Spanish cedar prevents beetles or it's a, it's, it, the bugs don't like the smell of the cedar. I looked it up on Wikipedia and it's true. Um, it says cedro, C-E-D-R-O, heartwood contains an aromatic and insect repelling resin that is the source of its popular name, Spanish cedar. And it says in parentheses, it resembles the aroma of unrelated true cedar. So it's not a cedar uh, in the cedar family of wood. It's more no. on the mahogany family of wood, but that is true as far as the smell or or whatever oil it has, that aromatic, it, it, it does repel insects. So that's interesting, kind of like regular cedar, red cedar, North American cedar does to moths. They don't like that smell. Right. So they stay out of there. Right. So you can keep your sweaters clean. Right. And that's why mahogany is, is a alternate wood that can be used in the humidor because okay. it's, it's within the same family, but it's lacking the, 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 the resin that okay. creates. The, so you could line it with mahogany. Mm -hmm. I, I have, I've had requests for people want mahogany and interiors and you know what else i've also thought so here's the other thing people say well how do you how do you judge a good humidor well you judge it based off of its construction right well if you really don't cut it in half you don't really know if it's made out of hardwood or not you really need to ask the manufacturer go to their website do whatever you need to do to find out if it's made out of hardwood because there are these same companies that make these do make them out of hardwood and then put in a thicker piece of Spanish cedar as the complete lining. Not all of them are paper thin like this, but a majority of the ones that are manufactured in other countries are. And and there's you know nothing wrong with that as long as you can get it to do what you want it to do. Exactly. You know, and and which is the bottom line. And the key might be that I live in Minnesota, so my fluctuations are heavy in season change. Somebody who doesn't live in Minnesota, let's say Florida, maybe that's not as big of a deal. Maybe they don't, you know, really worry about what it's made of because for them it's like, you know, it's, it's pretty constant. California is pretty constant all the time unless you live more in the desert areas. This is going to be very problematic if you live in desert and high altitude areas like Colorado, um, Arizona. Yeah, where this it gets is going to be a problem. You know, you're going to want to step up. And I think in general, you're going to want to step up to this because you're going to value the investment you put into it. So this is what, 600 bucks through yep. Waxing Moon? This one is. This, again, 100 bucks. If you can get it on sale, you might save 30%. But let's just call it 100 bucks, 600 bucks. Vast difference. And the one thing that I always, people say, well, you, you'll figure out the quality of a humidor if you do the dollar bill test or the flashlight test and all that stuff. That is one factor. The seal is a very, I'm going to say it's only 30% of the actual uh, ability of the humidor to keep moisture in it. Right. If you have a bad seal, of course it's going to leak moisture. But I think in this case. Keeping all of this, keeping all this. Right. Constant is what's going to be. That's worse. Is, and is what's going to be eating this you up. really tiny thin bottom is just a big giant hole versus this super thick bottom hardwood. So let's talk about it. We did this. I mean, obviously this humidor is kind of wrecked, but I'm going to, I'm going to even apply pressure here and act like there's a hinge on this side and you know, you can pull it out. It's it's not bad. Like if I were at a store, I'd be like, oh, this is this is not bad. 
This has got a good seal. But in yours, it's interesting. We're pulling the humidor. At this point, I can't even get this out unless I tear it. I'm really actually pulling you guys. I'm, there is something to be said about that. I always thought it was bull. I thought it was bull. I was like, there is no way you can get a seal so good that it can hang on to a dollar bill indefinitely. But it it's true you can. So I guess it's part of it, but it's not all of it is what I mainly want to say. So that was interesting. Well, yeah, I think I think a big factor is you're in something like this, you're seasoning this quarter inch. Right. On this, you're gonna have to season all season the whole thing always. Well, and that's that's a great point because technically we are seasoning this MDF, and that's kind of what makes it yeah difficult to get a full. I mean, it doesn't make it difficult because at Boba we kind of tested all these, and that's why we tell you to use 184 size 60 for every 25 cigars this thing holds. This is a 50 count, so you need two size 60, and you need to do it for 14 days. It doesn't matter what's going on in the hygrometer because guess what? A hygrometer can only understand the amount of moisture that's in the air, and there's the cell structure of wood, and to be honest, that has no cell. This structure. has no cell structure. <laughs> well, it has cell structure. It has that. a. It's chopped up pieces of wood, so really, you're not even dealing, and and because it's so paper thin, that veneer, you're not even really dealing with a good base to absorb the the moisture. There's bound water and free water. You can look it up. There's tons of different articles, but you're really only using free water. Bound water is already done. This is all kiln drying wood. It's already Bound water is basically the life water of the plant. Once it's cut and dried, that's pretty much done. That's how wood gets its strength and rigidity because it's dried dried wood. But now that free water is the, basically think of it like a, an open cup. That's where water goes in and out really easy, but you're not changing the structure of the cup at all. That's what we're actually seasoning, that free water that's available. And that's why we want to season it because if we don't, it's going to take it from our cigars or from our maintenance packs, like our 72s. Yep. And so that's why we tell people to season. So you don't burn through Bovida packs in less than 30 days, or the relative humidity drops so low that it goes below 60% and your cigars end up giving up the moisture. Yep. Because it's going to, it's going to, this is going to eat it up and it's not going to maintain it, whether it leaks or not. It's not. And it can't really hang on to it like this can. This can hang on to this the because it's quarter inch. It's, yeah, it's Spanish cedar. cedar is doing what it's supposed to do. It's going to hang on to it, and then as you put cigars and boba packs in there, it doesn't need to do anything because the boba packs are keeping it where it wants to be, which is right around seventy percent. Right. So technically, this is a box inside of a box because this outside box is sealed all the way around before I even put the lining in, and. Um, so yeah, you're, you basically did go ahead and grab that piece. And ultimately what we have here, if we're looking at, let me pull this one. If we're looking at this, tip this up. You can see it right there. That whole piece that that's right on this edge, this is quarter inch Spanish cedar. Yeah. This is hardwood. What, what kind of hardwood is that? Well, this little strip here is walnut, but it's butternut. This one's butternut and walnut. So really what you're getting then is far superior. <clears throat> Will you hand me that lid? Yeah. This? Far far superior than this tiny little paper thin. Uh, if we crack this open uh, right here, this tiny little paper thin. Plus plus, you're, you're dealing with having to season this where it's not going to affect the, you know. So is this horrible no it just you got to know what you're getting into this is different than it's like the it's we'll like the insulated that. home which which one's furnace is going to run more often to keep it warm you know in the, in the winter time so yeah spanish cedar quarter inch all the way around i mean that's where you start i always told people when i worked in retail i was like you got to save up and just invest it's it's an investment you're going to want to put the most money into the humidor if you don't want the fluctuations. 
And then it's been something that's been passed down. I mean, people pass these down to their <laughs> family. And in your case, they're handmade. Yeah. Here yeah, um, in America. Right here in Minnesota. Yeah. And I mean, just even the way you, you make them is interesting. What other questions? So are wood humidors hard to maintain? It depends. You dealing with the one that I cut open or are you dealing with one that Ed makes? Um, Spanish cedar is really not cedar, but it's more mahogany, but it has that uh, smell so that it can uh, ward off any insects. Where do manufacturers start to cut corners? And I think we've made that clear, but I'll spell it out for you by asking it or by just saying it. They cut the corners in the quality of this of the the wood that they're using the thickness of the wood this is an mdf piece this is an mdf box it's not a hardwood and it doesn't have a ton of spanish cedar so th that's where they cut a ton of corners i've always thought the bottom was the biggest spot that they cut corners but entire this is clear it's the entire thing the hinges you know, it is a beautiful humidor. It looks gorgeous. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to argue that. I mean, I'm sure Kevin's talking about this one, but uh, what does Scott say here? Uh, that's my first humidor, and it's made up of exactly the amount of cedar as I expected. Ha, ha, ha. Nice humidor for the money, but got nothing on my aunt, aunt Dewey? I, I do. I do? What is that? Is that a that, type of that's, Yeah, no, that's a, a company that's coming out with, like, little – wine cooler ones okay yeah. gotcha so it's more of a non-wood humidor yeah but um, you know they're all good i mean exactly let's show one that's in progress because i think that's interesting so you guys can see where corners are either cut or where they're not cut keep sending up questions if you have them i want people to uh you know fully there you fully go. understand what you need to be looking for so here is the inside yeah, of basically hard. a wood humidor that is almost done. If we look at well, this I from a, the lid and yeah, the lid is missing. So right where this line is right here, that's where the lid's going to be cut. And this is obviously going to have a top on it. But what you'll notice is right here, these holes, you want to grab those hinges. Sure. So most humidors use these kind of cheap stamped hinges and the thing that i don't like about these is if you don't perfectly align these <clears throat> the lid is going to be off you know a little bit it might be off a 16th of an inch you know that's where you get that movement um with these hinges they're barrel hinges and really what he did is he drilled holes first. all the way through first. So they're perfectly aligned. So now when he actually puts these in, when I they're cut perfectly the lid off, aligned. There's, it has no choice but to line up. Perfect. And there's no play in the hinge here because this is four pieces of metal with a pin. Just a, well, it's, it's small things like this, guys, that are making the a, difference here. This is machine brass. These little guys are... You know, that piece there is probably thirty dollars. You know, it's about thirty dollars. And this is the guide. Yeah, this is about thirty bucks, and these are about ten bucks for a set. So that, there's like forty bucks worth of hinges. Um, and this really, the only reason this is used is because basically it's a stop. These will open up all the way. Yeah. So that the lid would literally. Um, it, since it goes all the way like that, the lid would absolutely go all the way to the back. I don't know if you can show that or. So here's what we're talking about. Here's the stop, the brass stop. That's 30 bucks. And these are $10 a piece. Yeah, that's just, but they're, you know, I don't charge for them. That's including pricing. But that's the quality but of what's being put into the humidor. Is these, you get a set of these for like $3.50. This is stamped. And that's. Pretty much what that that's is. what this has got. Yeah. Essentially, this is that hinge. And then, like a high end one of those. 
which is a quadrant hinge like that. That's the same thing there. This one here is a $50 set of hinges. And these ones are brass and they have very, they don't fluctuate like this. This has play in it. Yeah. This with is, this pin, because this pin is kind of, it's not super fit to it. It's, it's all right. It's not bad, but. So, you know, all it's in the details, you know. Absolutely. So in this humidor, then. This is basically the shell waiting to be lined with Spanish cedar. Yeah, I still got a little all the bit way around. Do, but... And then get a lid on it, cut it, put the hinges in, and then put a finish on the outside. And it got to seal the interior, the inside, and then then line it. Oh yeah, that's right. So the inside is actually going to get how many coats of probably about cedar? three. Three. Yep. And the outside is going to get how many quotes to get us to basically this finished product? Uh, probably about five or six. You know, sometimes you're, you're good after about four, but it just all depends on how it's looking. Um, but yeah, about five or six. There's a little magnet in here. That's what that's for. I put a washer there so you can find the magnet. <laughs> yeah, so there's a magnet behind the Spanish cedar so that if you have a hygrometer that you want to put in there, you can. Now, of course, this is for the boba packs and then the trays. And here's the other thing. You were saying this earlier. These slats, notice, they run diagonally. There's nothing more annoying than the ones that run vertically, and then my cigars sit in the hole that I'm supposed to have the moisture going through. Like, I want air movement so that there's moisture going everywhere, and this is brilliant. No matter which way I put the cigars, they're not breaking. They're not breaking that, that movement of air. And then you also put some some corrugations down in the bottom there. Yeah, that's so I call that the crumb catcher. The crumb catcher. Yeah. So then that allows, as it sits down there, there's Circulation. air movement going up yep. and down. Now, is air movement important in a humidor? I think so. Yeah. You think so? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what. From our scientific studies, once you close this lid. In about 24 to 48 hours at the most, the moisture is pushed everywhere. Yeah. And we did the study. It's kind of, it's kind with of with Bovida, it's it's pushed, the moisture is pushed evenly throughout the humidor, and you don't have to really worry about like fans or air movement. But that again is in a wood desktop humidor. That is not in a cabinet. Right. That that's different. Cabinets do need fans, they need humidity because the the level and you know all that stuff. In, in here. Uh, it wasn't as big of a factor, but I do like the fact that you have the channels in there to yeah. make it even easier to come to equilibrium. That's all we're trying to achieve. We want quick equilibrium at 69, 70%, and we want it to stay there. So now we have hardwood sides, a, a actual veneer on the inside so that the wood is not absorbing moisture from the inside. Nice, thick, quarter inch Spanish cedar as my liner. And now this is how I get my Spanish cedar most of the time on eight foot boards. This is an, unbelievable. This is like rough cut yeah. cedar. And then you have to plane it or not plane it, but you bandsaw cut it yeah. to the thickness. So you'll get about what three pieces out of this? If I'm lucky, yeah. Okay. So two because then you gotta plane it down to the to the right thickness. You gotta cut it fat. Oh, which way am I going here? Yeah, you'll get yeah. about three. Questions people start asking them because I don't yeah, know. There's a lot of misconceptions about humidors. I mean, I, I read read a lot of questions that people ask in these groups. Um, uh, Clint says the dollar bill doesn't lie. That's huh? perfect. I, you know, Clint, I'm a believer now. I wasn't before. I was like, because of because I thought the construction mattered more, and I still do. I'm not going to say that the dollar bill test is like, oh, this is a great humidor. Dollar bill test on here is like, okay, it's good. But is it really good? Is it the best you can buy? Absolutely not. Because it's all MDF. That's what matters most. What the humidor is made out of matters most. And sometimes you guys would be surprised. The ones that charge a lot of money may not be made in this manner they're actually made in this manner so know what you're buying to be honest know exactly what you're buying uh other questions came in a little late 
What are the names of the large Spanish wood humidor you were displaying? This is every, all of this stuff is from Waxing Moon humidors. <laughs> you can go to Waxing Moon uh, and get information there. Other companies like Brizard & Co, they make great humidors like this. Yep. There's tons of manufacturers out there, possibly maybe in your area. You ship everywhere, you ship worldwide. So pick somebody who you can work with, is in your price range and will build yep. you something that you want. He'll do all sorts of custom stuff. They all will. They all do. They all do custom stuff. The key is what I want to highlight here is not necessarily the brands, but the construction of the humidor. What are you getting when you buy a humidor? You want to get the best. The guy is asking if I'm a vet. I I am a vet. I'm a veteran. Yes. Thank you so much for your service. <laughs> you in fact told me a story before camera that you ended up making a flag box for the pilot of the second plane on 9-11 yep. and you flew out to well i lived in new jersey at the time so I was you up lived there. in new jersey yes so you hand delivered it to him yep wow um one for the wife and i made one for each of the daughters and the mother okay and um i don't know if you yeah it, it was a roller coaster ride, i bet but and you said yeah. after you made those, you didn't make anything for a whole year. Yeah. Yep. That's what, what can you do that's more meaningful than that? You know, and unbelievable. Nine eleven is tomorrow. Even that's kind of odd how all that came up. Yeah, no kidding. But yeah, that that was an experience. But actually, I, I worked for a transportation company. We had like six hundred trucks run around the country and there's a wood magazine that I subscribe to where an old old woodworker out in Oregon put a call out to all woodworkers to build flag cases for the people involved with 911 in New York and of course the response was great they you had high school shop sure. classes boy scout troops uh, guys would you know Everyone. Problem was they're all over the country. Yeah. You know? So we had 600 trucks. The owner of the company that I worked with, worked for, was, you know, from New Jersey. And, of course, he's going to be all, all behind it all. Yeah. So I spent the next probably three or four months, my job was getting all these flag cases picked up and delivered to the fire house in New York. <laughs> oh, wow. And, as and so the, those trucks were able to go as well. As, we were out, out there anyway. Yeah, and, they're and, already out there. And if we had one to happen to go pass them by, stop in, pick, pick them the, up, bring them back to our, our warehouse, New Jersey, and then give them to the families. And then we, well, we took them down to the firehouses, and families came there and picked them up. Right. Yeah. So how do you know how many ended up total being given out? Um, or made? There was um, three hundred forty-three of them. For the firehouse total, I don't know because I wasn't in charge of that sure. part, you know. Okay. But you know, as a result of picking them up and everything, that's why the the guy who organized it gave me the honor of building the play case for the pilot. Oh, that's how you got that. Yeah. Out. Wow. Nice. Yeah. So that yeah, that was a roller coaster ride, you know. <laughs> yeah, man. And um. Yeah. Cool. What a great story. Amazing. But. Amazing what you can do with just a little bit of attention to detail, a little bit of heart and soul into it, and uh, yeah. provide something that people can use indefinitely. And, and it's, have it's, some a, it's a rewarding experience, all of it. You know, I, I enjoy building every one of my humidors. Um, and there's so much involved. Do you know Michael? He says, egg cut cedar planks perfectly for my cabinet humidor in southeast Minnesota. Thank you again, Ed. <laughs> no problem. I remember, I remember that. So um, post some questions if you have them about humidor quality. We're going to be monitoring this as it gets dropped onto YouTube. Um, we'll help you as best we can. I'm trying to do the myth busting. Um, one of the things that I've always thought as well with humidor construction is glass top humidors are junk. 
And you've made a couple glass top humidors. Oh, I've made several glass yeah. top humidors. You know. They're not junk. What ends up being the problem, and it's kind of seen best in this uh, piece here. Yeah, let's go to the macro lens. Uh, what ends up being the problem is that, see how there's some play? Let's get it angled here. Like it. See how there's some play there on the on the edges? Go full both edges there. Just get this top piece. Go to the other side. Let's get both of them in frame. Yeah, see how there's some play there? And actually this one kind of shows better. There's a big gap there. Yeah, right. Everything's right there. Big gap um, right there. And that is, and the, the glass then slides around in there and it doesn't create a good seal like so a picture what, like a piece of glass in a picture frame you right. know just yeah and it's just moving around in there it's not doing what it should be doing and ultimately what you want in that lid then we can cut back over to the main one if you want matt um what you want in that lid is you want it sealed and you put a bead of silicone mm -hmm. around that so it's sealed and it's not moving and therefore you're not getting the leak in you you would normally get right the only thing you got to be worried about is sunlight coming in and and you know basically damaging your cigars because they don't respond well to sunlight but for the most part i like a, a glass top humidor if it didn't leak like a sieve so I yeah appreciate I, that. I, I have a couple of glass top humidors that i use you yeah know, and it's kind of nice to see the sticks yeah. inside i think um but with what you do with woodwork it's amazing um so either way you go I just wanted to put that myth to rest. Not all glass top humidors are junk. It's how they're made. And I think that can be the same thing said for any wood humidor. It's how it's made. It's not necessarily junk. It's just, it's going to leak more moisture. It does. It's, it's made out of MDF. That's now just getting all wet because we got a bunch of moisture and it's sucking it up. Um, versus yep. Spanish cedar. Obviously this is really thick. You're normally using this size. So can you, uh, um, can you get this with a, a close-up of that? See, this is kind of a good illustration of what you're trying to accomplish when you're seasoning. It's extreme, of right. course. You know what I right, mean? Right, 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 right. Um, but you see, you see how the water is soaking through here? It's probably about a sixteenth of an inch. You know, it's going to soak all the way through. That's what you're trying to do with seasoning. Not as extreme. You don't want it as wet. You want the humidity to be... Yeah, there's no actual water. It's actual water vapor. But yeah. this is essentially a visual of what of, that would of, be. Of what you're trying to do when you season. You know, you're trying to get that water vapor to stabilize all the way to the edge of this thing. So, you know, and this, you see how fast that sucked that up? That's how fast it's going to lose it, too. Right. Yeah, because there's really no, and if we laid that in the water, we can let it sit for a while. Let's show these two pieces side by side because I thought both of those were interesting. There's a way to make the corners better. There's um, obviously this corner, if I pop it open, is just a, show this corner down here. It's just a straight cut. You can kind of see the difference in wood grain. It's literally a 45 degree angle put together. You're, the only thing that's keeping this together is the glue. Ed, you've gone ahead, and, and other people do this as well, but you've gone ahead and made a corner that basically has two grooves to come together. And really, if it's if one piece of wood is fluctuating, it's pulling into that groove, not separating because of the glue. You got a lot more glue surface. Yeah, you, you got know, more glue surface, and you actually have physical tongue and groove yeah. that's holding it together. The other thing that this does is obviously we talked about it earlier. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, here it is. The naked non-sealed wood versus the sealed. The inside of the humidor is sealed because of this wood is still going to absorb moisture, but when we seal it, it doesn't. So you seal all your wood heavily so that it's not yeah. pulling on each other. Which and then, and then once this gets seasoned, it doesn't, try to keep on going through like like this one is but so yeah 
construction matters. That's the biggest thing that you guys have to take away from this construction matters. Even this uh, wood here, you can kind of see it. This is the quarter inch Spanish cedar. Um, and essentially that's what we got going on when, again, you're that, not- This one absorbed water. water as well. Yeah. But it's but only it's, gonna go quarter inch. Right, and you want this, I mean, I don't, okay, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the wipe down method. The wipe down method, in my opinion, is total garbage and junk because when you do the wipe down method, you're only applying like maybe one to two grams of moisture, one to two grams of, of moisture for it to grab. This wood is actually going to take about, I always, from our studies, it's about the same ratio as the number of cigars it can hold. So if it's 150 count humidor, it's probably going to absorb anywhere from 120 to 150 grams of moisture. With the Boveda packs, each Boveda pack has almost 40 grams of moisture to give off. So that's why we tell you to use one per 25 count because now you're slowly pushing moisture into the wood. When you just wet wood with water, whether it's distilled or not, that myth of like, oh, undistilled water has chemicals and minerals in it, that's bad. Distilled water is bad as well because no matter what type of water it is, microbes grow in water not yep. just distilled and undistilled. So if you pour water on this and it sits on there too long, mold can grow. Yep. And there is mold on organic products like cigars, like wood. There's just naturally, there's mold in the air. So what we don't want to do is saturate this with water, actual physical water. What we want to do is put boba packs in there so that it's water vapor. It's, it's the moisture that's in the air that's getting picked up by the wood. That's why it takes longer for the wood to season with the bovida method, but it's safer. It's less shock to the wood and you're pushing moisture into the free cellular structure of the wood. Look it up on the internet that you'll see the cellular structure and free water is basically, like I said, like a glass of water. It's, it's going between the, the cells. Yeah. It's literally taking a bunch of water bottles, stacking them all together, and then pouring them out and pouring them and filling them back up with water. That's it. So, I don't know. I hope that explains most of it. Did we miss anything, Ed? No, not that I – I think we covered a lot, but if anybody has any questions about anything with humidors, just be happy to – Where can they find you on Instagram? I'm on Instagram media. and Facebook. What's your handle on Instagram? Uh, Waxing Moon Humidors. Waxing Moon Humidors. And same, same on Facebook. Instagram, Facebook, his website, all of it. And again, like I said, there's other companies that do this just as good as Ed. You just got to find one that works for you. Send us questions. Send us comments. Everything. Uh, I'm looking over my questions. This is a $600 humidor, guys. This is a $100 humidor. I would much rather save up for this humidor than I would for this. This can get cheaper if you don't do a ton of uh, inlays and different woods. And, you know, you were saying some of the wood is $800 a board. Yeah. So ultimately, yeah. it's kind of the wood you pick. The hardwood is going to be the majority of the cost. The Spanish cedar is not the majority of the cost. No. So... It's how fancy you want the outside and, and what price point, but you can get good quality on less expensive. You, know, you don't have to spend $1,000 to get a great humidor. You can spend $500. You can spend $300 and get a great humidor. Just got to know who's making it and what they're making it out of. And be okay with it. Yes. You know, I mean, I mean, if the... I don't think there's anything wrong with this kind as long as you know that that's what you're getting. Exactly. There's, I, you know, this is my first humidor, guys. Like, I'm not saying I'm so, I knew so much better. I didn't. I didn't know any better. I bought a humidor because I wanted the cedar smell. I wanted the wood smell. And I got that out of this. Every time I opened up this box, I salivated and I smoked my cigars. Did I have fluctuations in humidity? Yes, I did. And, and that was, that's the big eye opener for me is this is a straw house. This is a brick house.
It's two different houses for my cigars. You get what you pay for. So I hope that helps. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, post your comments as much as you can. We'll respond to these. I thank you all for joining us. We had quite the turnout for this. I appreciate everyone joining us and submitting questions. Ed, thank you for driving up from Albert Lee. <laughs> yeah. Appreciate you making great humidors for us. You did okay on a less than 24 hour notice, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nothing like last minute. Yeah. So appreciate it, guys. Have a great weekend. Sorry. Enjoy I, great cigars. I had to throw that in there. No, that's good. Take care, guys.